Hello and welcome again to today's edition of Market Analysis. I'm Giovanni Benacour, Operator and Educator with Vantage Markets, and this is Market Analysis for today, Wednesday, the 28th of September. Well, a reverse currency war is underway with central banks around the world struggling to keep pace with an aggressive Fed and a soaring dollar that's climbing like it's got somewhere better to be. The greenback is up more than 20% against the British pound and Japanese yen, with a firmer fresh of an all-time low. Rather than trying to divide the currencies like in traditional currency wars, policymakers are doing the, the reverse in trying to engineer gains. The uh, thinking behind a reverse currency war goes something like this. Central banks want to make their currency stronger via monetary policy tightening so that the U.S. dollar doesn't leave them in the dust. This is the opposite of what goes down in a normal currency war, where a country may deliberately try and weaken its currency to make its exports more attractive to trading partners around the world. At present, currencies that can't keep up with the dollar end up dealing with more expensive imports, further fueling an already painful cycle of inflation. Given the past three seven basis point rate hikes, the Fed has proven its commitment to taming inflation, and as a result, has sent the dollar soaring to multi-decade highs against other currencies, including the yen and the euro. Now, central banks around the world have followed the Fed in their campaign against inflation, and the Bank of England has said it will not hesitate to hike more aggressively come November following its 50 basis point rate hike this month. Those comments come as the pound dropped to a record low against the greenback, the UK imports of its food and fuel from abroad, and with inflation already running at 9.9%, the pound slide means household pain. And with central banks focused on monetary tightening, this reverse currency wars raise the odds of a widespread economic downturn. Now, I think that a global recession remains a real possibility, given that several central banks have moved in the, in the direction of tightening monetary policy. Given that inflation does not seem to fade away, I do not expect monetary policy to change direction soon. Now, analysts from Net uh, Davis Research wrote in a recent note that the firm's global recession probability model now stands at 98.1%. The only other times the indicator hit this mark was during the pandemic downturn of 2020 and in the financial crisis of 2008. The analyst pointed out, too, that other key recession indicator has been flashing for the, for the 13 of the last 14 months, similar to the other marker. It's only been at this level in 2020, 2008, and also in early 2000s. The Fed believes that maintaining a reputation for stable and low inflation is important to create the conditions for long-term sustained growth. Thus, I do not believe that the Fed will hesitate in fighting inflation, even if this means pushing the economy into a recession. With that being said, Let's take a look at what we can expect for the market before the open. All right, so we have about roughly about 40 minutes so far right now. Let's say 35 minutes to the, to, the, uh, to the bell. All right, so in the NASDAQ, in this 30-minute chart, we see how the NASDAQ is already trading above our 52-day moving average, which is this green line right here. My pivot of 11.355 is an, as active as a resistance, which he has so far is being met. The other side, however, is not in overbought territory. Now we have it. We have the 200 moving day average, which is this red line right here, uh, and getting closer to the, to the 52. If once we have the 52 cross from below the 200, that's that's a golden cross, and that could be an indication of a strong you no know, move to the upside. Uh, from that moment, obviously going back to 11,500 is the psychological resistance level that I have, but I have mine right below it. So a move to the upside so far as we speak. If the market was to open right now, we will be, moving, we'll be opening to the upside. Uh, the fact that the, the 30 candle is 
trading above the 52 uh, is important. Now we want obviously for this candle to close above it for the continuation of the movement to the upside. Then we have here the S&P 500, which this candle is trading strongly above our, our pivot point. The RSI is not in overbought territory. So a movement to the upside is obviously a consensus. We have 3,700 as our psychological resistance level right now, but obviously my resistance is right below that one. So a movement to the upside is, is, is obviously favored. Uh, the same token goes with the Dow. The Dow is trading, uh, the RSI is still not an overbought scenario. It's trading above our 52 day moving average. The 2900, 29,500 resistance level is at bay. I have the uh, June low uh, trading as also a, a possible resistance, which probably the market will come towards it and see if it can, if it, if it can trade above it and close above it today so that's uh we gotta we got to put an eye on that all right so we have now uh, crude oil rsi is almost into it, it overbought territory this the 52 uh they move an average is is way below the market right now the market is actually trading above the 200 okay so that's uh that's a strong signal of of, of you know more upward momentum uh, to come. So let's keep that in mind, even though the RSI might just be getting into the overbought scenario, that $80 psychological barrier is where we are looking for our, our, our target uh, to come to the market towards and see if, if it is above that one. Then we have net gas. Net gas is also trading to the upside. Uh, the 52 uh, they move an average expansion moving average is closing up on our pivot point and that will obviously bring a lot of resistance around here so could we see the net gas trading back up to 66.80 that's uh, what we want to see obviously that's our target initial target right now yeah I have my my resistance of seven dollars uh, should we come to to or towards it now gold uh, had a nice pop to the upside. Uh, it's, it, it traded above the 52-day moving average. It closed above it, but this candle is just making a, a, a small correction towards it. Uh, the RSI is not an over, overbought scenario, so we could continue to contemplate a move to the upside. 1650 is my resistance. That could be my target. Then we have silver. Silver is really lingering right around the 52 moving average, 52 day moving average, okay? So we need to obviously see if this will close above it. Uh, the RSI is still not an overbought uh, scenario, but we could obviously see if the uh, 52 day moving average will act as that resistance or will we see the market come uh, trade above it and close above it, okay? There's a lot of consolidation around that level right now. All right, copper. Copper is, is trading above our 52 day moving average. RSI is not an overbought scenario. Uh, I favor a uh, move to the upside, at least to the 332 or my pivot point. And beside and above that will be the 200 day moving average. So we'll, any, any candles closing up uh, outside above the 200 day moving average will well, obviously favor a continuation to the move side to the upside to come to a resistance of 340. Okay, then we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin is looking to trade. Uh, it's also uh, right around above of 52 week, uh, 52 day, a day moving average and 200, which are very, very close to one another. Uh, market needs to obviously close above it, uh, comes uh, to come up to 19,500. Scenario RSI is still in, in no two territory, so there's room for it to, to move. All right, then we have Euro USD. This point nine ninety five fifty has high has held. Uh, this is a nice support level here for the Euro. Uh, ninety point ninety six five hundred is the target. Then we have the pound trying to recover, uh, recover, recover. But the fifty two week fifty two moving average is acting as a resistance. Uh, right, or right below the 107 mark. So, will we see the the pound trade 
above the 52-day moving average. Uh, RSI still in not in overbought uh, territory, so that could happen. Then we have the uh, Japanese yen trading right below our the 52-day moving average. Uh, candles are red. Then we could probably contemplate a movement to uh, to the downside, uh, and that's probably the uh, dollar index losing some ground. Uh, really, but that's nicely put. But should we see the the dollar index drop down to our support level, then we'll see a continuation to the upside on those currency on those assets as as gold and the currencies. Okay, uh, but if we continue to see something around this level. Uh, we'll probably see more strength on, on the pound, on the uh, crude oil. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Have a fantastic trading day.